Hashmap Megabytes. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Hashmap Megabytes. Today, we are going to do the uh, dreaded Azure Active Directory single sign on setup for Snowflake. Uh, first thing, let's go to Azure and uh, head over to Active Directory and find our enterprise applications. This used to be kind of a harder process, but now, now Snowflake is um, you know, a first class uh, connector here. So let's go ahead and add a new application. And we're gonna add it from the gallery. Just search for uh, Snowflake. And give this a good descriptive name, probably not just Snowflake. Uh, even if you only have one account, uh, it's usually pretty good to name these well. So I'll call this one our HashMap GCP Snowflake. Okay. Uh, the rest looks really good here. So let's add it. And first thing, uh, we're just going to set up single sign-on. You can get to this on the left as well, but this is pretty easy. And we're going to select SAML. And now we'll need just a little bit of information from your Snowflake instance. So let's edit this first basic SAML configuration area. And we're basically going to put in different flavors of your account URL. So uh, the way to grab it is just grab everything up to the com from whatever your Snowflake account is. So I will grab all of this, including the HTTPS, copy it. And we're going to paste it here just... Um, as is, I don't think you need that back trail slash. Maybe it'll work, but let's get rid of it. Uh, and then we're gonna, down here in the reply URL, we're gonna add a little magic at the end here. Fed, and I, I believe that's login. Let me check here, I have the docs open. Fed log out and fed login. Okay, great. So um, it's fed login, and this is how the, the two tools are gonna talk to each other. And then the sign-on URL is, again, just our basic uh, URL with nothing after it. And then our logout URL is going to be fed logout. So just that, four little areas here. We're going to leave relay state blank. Um, and this, will, this is all we'll need. So we'll save that. And hopefully you followed me this far. Um, the next part is what I would consider maybe the scarier part is that we have to download a file and we're gonna have to read it. So uh, look at the SAML signing certificate here in section three and we're gonna want the base 64 certificate. We're gonna go ahead and download that and I'm gonna put it in my desktop here. And I believe that's everything we're gonna need from here. We're gonna come back to get this login URL in a second but let's jump over and look at this certificate. So without getting into too many details, this is just a little text file that includes um, some information about logging into uh, this environment. And it's how Snowflake's gonna tell Active Directory that it is a legitimate uh, service. So um, go ahead and copy this information. And you should have in the link here um, in, our, in our video, uh, a link to some SQL. Uh, in, in GitHub, and this is the SQL we're gonna use in Snowflake to actually set this up. The cool thing about Snowflake is you can do so much stuff with SQL, let's take advantage of that. So we're copying just the parts in between begin cert and end cert. We don't want those parts. We're gonna copy it as is, come here, and, and just fill this part in where it says certificate. And I know it doesn't look super pretty, but we're gonna leave it that way. Um, you don't want to share this with anyone, by the way, these are secrets. When I'm done with this video, I'm going to delete all of this. So, um, uh, you know, don't, don't share this information. Next is the SSO URL. So I mentioned that we're going to grab one little thing from, from Active Directory. So let's jump back into Active Directory and find this login URL here in section four, copy it. And we'll add that here. Type is custom. Uh, let's leave that as it is. And then uh, we're going to call this, you know, HashMap Azure Active Directory. I tried to do this uh, before, and there are, you're not allowed to have spaces here, and there's a 20 character limit. So let's just call this Azure AD. I think that'll work just fine. And then um, 
go ahead and copy all of this SQL and let's go to Snowflake. Paste that in, and first you're gonna need account admin access. That, you know, that makes sense. This is a pretty serious operation. And then we're gonna alter our account and we're gonna set our SAML identity provider to this, um, this kind of JSON value that we just created. And then the last step, which is really important, it's easy to overlook, because right now SAML single sign-on will work just fine, but uh, we won't see the option in our login page to use single sign-on. So we're gonna alter our account and let single sign-on login page be true. So now when we go to login, uh, we will see a single sign-on option. So now I can log out. Very important though, your user logins, uh, the name, the login name for your user must match exactly the uh, identity you have in your Active Directory. Most often, this is your email address. Whatever email address you use to sign in with Active Directory into Azure, that must be your login name. So. You can check that by um, running describe user on really any user that you have and look for this login name. Mine is my email address. I believe it's case insensitive. If you want to um, change this, it is really simple. You just do alter user and then set login name equal and then it's a single quote here and then put your email address. I have a, a mistake I've done before is had a little space here and that's really hard to debug. So make sure you do it exactly, no spaces. Um, and you'll wanna do that for everyone in your account that's gonna be using this. And that's why I recommend for people creating user accounts, go ahead and set that login name to the email address anyway. Um, that's good for a couple reasons. So um, let's log out and see if this works. Okay, so now we can log in. We see this uh, single sign-on button that will uh, allow us to actually test out our single sign-on. So when I click this, I'm going to get an error, which is a good thing. This is exactly what we kind of want. I never added myself on the Active Directory side as a authorized user. user. So this is gating access from the Active Directory side. So if I go back here and go to users and groups in my um, enterprise application, I can go ahead and add myself, and you can do this for whole groups of people. Um, I'll just select uh, myself here. And this is where you can see that email address I mentioned before. Select and assign. Great, so now I am an authorized user of this enterprise application. Um, and if I go back here and try to sign in again, Then hopefully it works. Yep, okay. So now I'm signed in. Uh, no need for a password or anything. If I, if you want to, you can then remove someone's password um, using unset. Uh, on, that, on that user, um, that, should, that should remove the password and then keep them only as SSO users. There are reasons you don't wanna do that, but um, if you want to ensure everyone's always using SSO only, uh, create their users without passwords and they'll have to. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. Uh, reach out if you have any other questions and please subscribe for more Megabytes content. Hashmap Megabytes.